Ever notice how some apps on your Android device won't let you take a screenshot? Well, I'm gonna give you a few things that you can try to see if you can get around that next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello everyone, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So there are plenty of reasons why apps won't allow you to take screenshots. You might have an app on your device that at some point in time you try, can, try to take a screenshot and Android just won't let you do it. And it's all about protection. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why that might be, show you some examples of it not working, and then try and give you some tools that might help you get around that if you really need to. Uh, but like I said, one of those reasons is safety. Now, for example, Authy is my own two-factor authentication app. I love it. It has the keys to many of my most important accounts. If I try to do a screenshot using the power volume down shortcut on my phone, which by the way, it's a great shortcut. I use it all the time. Uh, it actually doesn't work. I get this message on the screen that tells me the app has disabled this functionality uh, of the OS. The developer explicitly does this to make it difficult for people to accidentally share the keys to their kingdom in this case, or for someone to do it for them. So there you have it, and that's good to know. Now, the same happens when I try to run a screen recording on the device and launch into Authy. Uh, when I play back that screen recording media, I end up with a black screen during the time that Authy is running. Okay, fair enough. Developers have set their apps to protect against this and the Android operating system complies. It's actually very powerful. and I totally get it. I do appreciate that Android has my back for security. Now, just as often, it's DRM. DRM, of course, stands for Digital Rights Management. If I open up Google Play Movies on my device and then go into my library and play a movie, say I want to pull a screenshot for something, for like a meme or something, uh, I'll press and hold the power and down button simultaneously for a second to get that screenshot fired off, and I get a little message that says, uh-uh, that's not allowed, and ultimately that screenshot isn't even taken at all. Okay, fine. Maybe you know about a feature that Assistant has. Assistant can actually take screenshots too. Maybe that's the way to do it. So let's find that frame on the movie. We swipe up. In this case of this phone, I swipe up from the corner to summon Assistant. I say share screenshot. And it asks me who I want to share it with. So this might actually work. That's great. We're one step closer. Uh, I'll send it to myself just to test it out. So I'm sending it to my own uh, SMS account. And the screenshot is basically a smushed image with smeary text and vast darkness. That feature, by the way, if you want to look for it in Assistant, it's called Use Screen Context. It needs to be activated inside Assistant settings. Uh, so make sure and do that. It works in other useful ways, just not this one, unfortunately. So uh, be sure to activate that. All right, so none of these examples is going to get you very far. These methods are not foolproof, obviously. Um, and honestly, I don't actually have a silver bullet for you right now. Maybe if you rooted your device, you'd have the ability to take screenshots and shoot video uh, and, and uh, screen recordings of everything on your app. I'm not really gonna go there today. I'm sticking to a device that's unrooted. I do have a method that you can try out though to see how far it gets you because it does work in some cases and especially it works in some cases that won't work strictly on the device itself. In my testing, this method works fine for apps like Authy as one example, but not necessarily in apps that are relying on digital rights management. So, you know, apps like uh, Play Movies or Amazon Prime Video, this method probably isn't going to work there. So um, it's not a method for like recording movies off of Netflix, that sort of thing. That's not what I'm giving you here because it's just not going to work. But let's take a look at what it can do for you. So what you're going to need is your phone, of course. You'll also need a USB cable to connect your phone to the third thing that you need, which is your computer. Now I'm using a MacBook Pro. Um, the cross-platform app that we're going to use today is called SCRCPY, all one word, 
or I assume that stands for screen copy. And you can find it on github.com slash capital G-E-N-Y mobile slash S-C-R-C-P-Y. You can see it on screen. It does not require root access on your device. So that's good. But it does require some setup on your computer and, you know, a little setup on your phone before it'll work. And this setup will be very familiar at this point. On the phone, be sure to enable the developer options menu if you don't have it already. You find the build number in settings, you tap that seven times, uh, put in your security code, and then you open up the developer options menu and find USB debugging. That has to be on, as it usually does for so much of this stuff that we do in Terminal. So activate that. Secondly, on your computer, which like I said, I'm using a MacBook Pro. If you have a PC or Linux machine, just go to that GitHub page I mentioned a few minutes ago and find the full instructions for your machine and you can install it from there because each machine uh, acts a little differently in this case. Uh, but here I opened up Terminal on my Mac and installed Homebrew, which is an open source software package management system that allows for very easy installation of stuff like screen copy. So go there, it's easy to find, brew.sh on the web to install it on your device. Now once Homebrew was installed, I issued another command in terminal. This command is brew install scrcpy. And this actually installs uh, screen copy via the homebrew repository. You can see here I already had it installed, so it didn't go through the whole process. If you're doing this for the first time, it will. Then finally, I issued a final terminal command, which is brew cask install Android dash platform dash tools. And this installs Android platform tools, which is essentially contains the ADB hooks needed to interface with my Android device correctly. And it kind of links them up to screen copy, which is nice. It's all very straightforward and it's listed there on the GitHub page. And, you know, just to reiterate what I just mentioned were the Mac uh, instructions. You will have different instructions if you're on a PC or Linux device. Okay. Now we're gonna make sure to plug the phone into the computer, into my MacBook Pro here. And you'll see on my device, I'm asked to allow USB debugging. I go ahead and accept that, that opens up the USB port. And once it's all set up, I issue the command that will actually kick off the screen grab process. That's scrcpy dash r, and then the file name, which in this case, I'm just naming it authyscreencap.mp4. Once I hit enter on that, a large window appears on my Mac showing everything streaming in real time on my phone display. So it's it's my phone, but streamed to the computer. It's actually pretty cool. It's mirrored up there. I can go into Authy now and see on my computer, on my Mac, that the video is streaming the content from Authy into screen copy unaltered, which I couldn't even get before. So yes, this is this is recording that content. And yes, it is recording it to a video file. So not necessarily a direct screenshot. Maybe you're looking for a video file. That's great. You've got what you need. If what you're looking for is a screenshot, I'm going to get to that in a second. But uh, so what we know now is that screen copy works for apps protecting data from screenshots like we've seen. But what about DRM content like movies? Well, this is where it gets a little disappointing because uh, this method won't really work here. If I play a movie, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm playing Dog's Purpose. Uh, all I see are the controls of the media player. I don't see any of the content behind it. It's just blank darkness back there. And that's DRM, in effect, blocking the content from shining through. Um, so you're not going to get that here. Now, when you have captured what you do want... All you got to do is just close that video window on the computer and that will stop the recording. So that file is saved on my hard drive and I need to locate that file. Um, in this case, it's in my user directory. I open that up and there it is, easy to find. I can open it up and see everything is there as I expected, as was streamed in real time when I was uh, just looking at the window while it was connected to my phone. And so this is a video file. That might be all you need, but if you want a screenshot, on my Mac anyways, using QuickTime, things are a little bit more difficult than they should be. So here's my making things way more difficult than they probably need to be approach. Uh, go ahead and pause on the frame that you want to screenshot from, and then you can hit Control C to copy it to the clipboard. So that screenshot becomes a copy in your clipboard. And now if you just open Preview, which every Mac has, and then select New from Clipboard, 
or it's command N if you want the shortcut, uh, that will create a new file with that image in it. And there you have your screenshot. It was a long way to go to get there, but you can save it out and you have what you came for. Now, is any of this ideal? No, especially because you could always just do this very incredibly simple method that I'll show you right now. On your phone, pull up the thing you want to screenshot, take another phone with a camera app, and just go ahead and take a picture. All right. And it's about as easy as that. No, it's not perfect. And honestly, like I could, I took it sideways. I could probably crop this and make it look a little better, but that's the thing. It's not perfect, right? It's not a perfect digital representation of that image. It does sidestep DRM and it does prove kind of the pointlessness of some of these protections, right? There's always an analog hole. There's always a way for an app that's being protected within the system uh, to get around that protection because you just, all you need is another camera out in the real world to point at it and take a picture. And uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's pretty easy to do that. And in many cases, that might just be enough. So there you have it. Uh, some solutions, although not, like I said, not a silver bullet, but hopefully this helps uh, get your mind going as far as other methods when you want to work around some of these limitations, uh, if you have a reason to do so. Send me your questions, your tips, tricks, anything you think you want to find or hear or learn about on Hands on Android to hoa at twit.tv. You can also subscribe to the show by going to twit.tv slash hoa. That's where you can find links to audio and video formats, podcatchers, uh, links out to YouTube so you can subscribe there as well. I don't really care where you subscribe as long as you do, as long as you keep enjoying each and every episode of Hands on Android. A big thanks to John Ashley who edits the show each and every week. Appreciate your hard work, John. Thank you. And thanks to you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Want more Twit? Check out Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. Tech News Weekly is a show where Jason Howell and I bring the latest and greatest interviews to you from the people making and breaking the tech news. Twit.tv slash TNW.